let's paint the troll from the Battle of Asgiliath box set. The tutorial on how to magnetize this troll will be on the upper right hand corner of the screen. The paint scheme that I'll be using is very close to what's in the instructions. Start by priming the model and all the loose bits completely in black. I use a black primer with an airbrush. I next zenithal highlight the silver parts by adding gunmetal into Flow Improver 5050 and mixing them up. I shoot this mixture out of my airbrush onto parts like the shield, the various weapons, the breastplate, and also the shoulder pads of the troll. The parts that are not airbrush silver get white zenithal highlights. I do this with my white primer out of my airbrush and I try to hit it more from an upward angle so that it gives the overhead lighting effect. I also leave the recesses in black in order to create an illusion of shadow. To create the sickly beige skin, I use Palette Bone, which is an army painter speed paint. A lot of people have asked me in Facebook as well as over here in the comments thread if I've tried shooting speed paints through my airbrush. And I'm like, hmm, that's kind of a good idea. I've never tried that before. So this is the first video that I'm going to give it a shot. I apply the speed paint directly into the cup without any flow improver, and the results were really good. One of my viewers mentioned that you have a lot more control of the speed paint out of an airbrush, and I have to agree. I'm able to lay down very, very controllable coats all the way around the model, and if there are areas I want a little bit more color concentration, I just spray more in that location. This is the result of airbrushing the model with speed paint, and I think this is going to be one of my go-to techniques going forward. So thank you everyone for that suggestion. Onward to brushwork. I used some of the palette bone on a brush to cover up areas that I couldn't get too close with when I was airbrushing. Next, I switched to hardened leather speed paint, and this goes on anything that looks like wood, like this cudgel over here. And also, I used it to paint on all the straps and there are quite a few straps and belts and wrist wraps on this model so i go ahead and hit all those areas Next, I switch to dark wood speed paint and this goes on the leather area underneath the breastplate, the various weapon handles, and also the loincloth on the troll. Next, I apply some gunmetal metallic paint onto the areas that did not quite get the silver when I airbrushed it. This silver also goes onto the belt and onto the rings and studs on the chest area. For the fingernails, toenails, and teeth, I used skeletal bone. I needed something that looked a little bit off-white and dingy, and this worked really well for these areas. Now it's time to wash the parts with some strong tone. I apply this fairly liberally on areas that are silver and other areas that did not get speed paint. I also apply wash in between the teeth. It gives it a little bit more definition. I also apply this strong tone wash onto the welts in the front and at the back of the torso. 
A few of the magnetized heads have eyes. So I apply some white into the sockets with some matte white thin down paint and a small brush. I follow this up with some matte black with the same small brush and I apply the pupils onto the eyes. Since the pupils are pretty big, a small brush will do just fine. Onward to basing. Most of the time, I keep basing fairly simple. But this is a huge base with not much on it. So I'm going to add a few more things like these rocks over here as well as some grass just to spruce it up. Applying the rocks requires some super glue, specifically gel super glue. This allows the rocks to stick onto the base. And if you want a little bit more adhesion so that the rocks do not fall off, you'll want to soak these rocks with some regular watery super glue like this. Next, switching to the main basing material, which is this dark soil that I use. This is the same dark material I use for my orcs. I lay down generous amounts of Elmer's glue all over the base, and then I spread it in with an old brush. I then put the basing material over this Elmer's glue, and it sticks in place. The base still looks pretty barren at this point, so I go ahead and apply some dabs of Elmer's glue at random on the base. I then put some of this grass-like basing material onto those patches of Elmer's glue and it now looks like there's patches of grass. After varnishing the model, I'm all done. With this model fully painted and magnetized, you can play it as a Mordor troll, an Isengard troll, or even a cave troll if you really wanted to. Magnetizing does take some time, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. Follow along on this next video as I continue painting up the Battle of Asgiliad set. Until then, happy hobbying and I'll see you soon.